Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a 5-color Legends deck featuring Joda the Unifier as our commander, a 5-mana five 5-5 five five saying legendary creatures we control get plus X plus X, where X is the number of legendary creatures we control, so just by himself Joda already gets plus 1 plus 1, but this can quickly get out of hand as we play more legendary creatures, especially combined with his ability, saying whenever we cast a legendary spell from our hand, doesn't even have to be a legendary creature spell, we get to exile cards from the top of our library until we exile a legendary non-land card with lesser mana value and we may cast that card without paying its mana cost. So it basically gives us legendary cascade, which is incredibly powerful if we get to untap with Joda and string together a few legendary spells. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, I've split it up into non-legendary cards and legendary cards, which is most of the deck as you can see. At one mana we've got Swords to Plowshares as a cheap removal spell to deal with creatures, and then it's mostly ramp and mana fixing to help us play Joda ahead of schedule, with Explore and Grow Spiral letting us play an extra land. Into the North can find our Snow Lands, sadly have to play the Snow Covered Basics instead of the new Full Art Lands from Dominaria which look amazing. We've got Arcane Signets and Cold Steel Heart as ramp artifacts, Cultivate at 3 mana, and then a Fabora Elder can potentially make 5 mana alongside Joda, so excellent for helping us double spell. And then a Chromatic Lantern, great in any 5 color deck, as well as a Relic of Legends, which is an amazing new addition from Dominaria, making 1 mana of any color, and can also tap an untapped legendary creature we control to add 1 mana of any color. This also ignores Summoning Sickness, so makes it much easier to potentially cast a spell alongside Joda to get immediate value. And then Mirari's Wake doubles the mana that our lands produce, as well as giving the team plus 1 plus 1, great with the other green ramp spells as well. Then taking a look at our legendaries, we have one zero mana legendary card in Mox Amber that can also potentially help us ramp. And then this is the only card we can cascade into with Joda if we cast a one drop. And Shadow Spear is the only one mana legendary card in our deck, giving the equipped creature plus one plus one, trample and a lifelink. Great with all the bonuses from Joda pumping our team. And then at two mana, there's Fibblethip to draw a card when he enters. Karizev makes another legendary creature when it attacks, which will also pump the rest of our team, so very synergistic with Joda. We've got Lavinia, which is mostly here for the mirror match, which is already quite popular in Historic Brawl, as it will counter any spells that the opponent cascades into with Joda, as they didn't spend any mana to cast those. And then Katilda's excellent, as it will potentially help us ramp alongside our other humans. And Kolvori we can play as a 2-mana Ring Heart Crest, which can also potentially ramp for green. And then Kolvori is also excellent alongside more legendary creatures, and can also be activated to provide a bit of card advantage. And then at 3-mana there's Rasad as removal, we've got Raidan to punish non-creature spells, we've got Kira to protect our team from spot removal, can be a little bit of a nombo alongside our partners, but that's the exception for the most part, great at protecting our team and Joda more importantly. Krenko's excellent if we get a nice bonus, as it'll be able to make more goblins when attacking. And the Blade Reforged, also incredibly synergistic with Joda's Cascade ability, because it basically gets a plus one counter for each card that gets exiled while we go looking for a card with lesser mana value that fits the description. So the Blade Reforged can pick up a ton of plus one counters alongside Joda on the battlefield. We've got the Moon Druid to find a land when it enters, can also be specialized. Isika can help all our legendary creatures tap for mana. We've got Salvala, which can also make a ton of mana, potentially draw some cards. Linvala is another way to protect our team, giving Hexproof and Indestructible where needed. And Minsk makes a legendary token when it enters, so another kind of 2 for 1 legendary package like Karizev. And we'll see later at 5 mana there's Tulsimir as well. Then Lagrella can also exile an opposing creature when it enters. Kathis gives our legendaries a 1 mana discount and can potentially cast them out of our graveyard. And the Celestus is a legendary ramp artifact that also gives us a bit of card selection. Then at 4 mana there's Kyodai, which can be flashed in at instant speed, giving one of our permanents indestructible for as long as we control Kyodai, so perfect for protecting Joda potentially. Shalai also gives our other creatures and planeswalkers hexproof. We've got Questing Beast as just an individually powerful legendary 4 drop. Sarith gives our untapped creatures hexproof, so another way to protect Joda from spot removal. Wrath lets us play everything at instant speed, which is another great way to avoid sorcery speed removal, so we can maybe play Joda in the opponent's end step, 
untap and then reap the rewards. We've got a Rata Drabic, which will replace our dead legendary creatures with 2 2 zombies that still retain those abilities despite not being legendary anymore. Jora draws a card whenever we cast a historic spell, which includes all our legendary creatures as well as our artifacts. We've got the Partners, which is excellent alongside Joda, as it will increase their power and toughness even more to put more plus one counters and haste on our next creature. We've got Captain Cisse providing a ton of card advantage whenever it gets a chance to tap and activate. Yasharn can find some basics when it enters to help us keep hitting our land drop. And the Weather Light seemed appropriate in this deck as well, providing card advantage if it can hit the opponent. And then at 5 mana, Kenrith can potentially give the team a Trample and Haste if we activate the red ability, so that's the main reason why we're including it. We've got Urza's Runus Blast as a legendary sorcery, so it can only be cast if we control a legendary creature, and then exiles all non-land permanents that aren't legendary, so it's mostly going to be a one-sided sweeper. Vile Offering can destroy an opposing creature or planeswalker while reanimating another one and another legendary sorcery that can only be cast if we control a legendary creature. We've got Arvad giving our team plus 2 plus 2 and a 3 3 Death Touch Lifelink himself, and Lifelink also pairs well with Joda. Then we've got Samut, another way to give our entire team haste, can also be flashed in to maybe set up a surprise ambush. And then we've got Tulsimir making a legendary Friend to Elves token, which can fight when it enters, and also just plays well alongside Joda. Golos helps us ramp by finding a land when it enters. We're often going to search up the one copy of the World Tree, which will fix our mana if we have six or more lands in play, and can also be activated to find some of our gods, like Raidan, for instance. And then Timeless Lotus enters the battlefield tapped, unfortunately, but can then tap for one man of any color, so perfect for setting up a turn where we cast a Joda and cast another couple legendary spells alongside it. And then at 6 mana, Imbolus's Clutches is a legendary enchantment, so it still works perfectly alongside Joda, stealing an opposing permanent and turning it into a legendary permanent as well, so it will still help us pump our team. We've got Karn's Temporal Sundering, another legendary sorcery, letting us take an extra turn while bouncing an opposing permanent. We've got Kogla, fighting when it enters. We've got the Immortal Sun, as we're not playing any Planeswalkers in the deck, so just pure upside, pumping our team, giving us a discount and drawing extra cards each turn. Glorious Rebirth is another legendary sorcery that returns all legendary permanent cards from our graveyard to the battlefield, awesome in the more grindy matchups. And then a Chroma's Memorial, a legendary artifact, saying creatures we control have Flying, First Strike, Vigilance, Trample, Haste, and Protection from Black and from Red, especially the Haste and Trample, incredibly impactful alongside Joda, as we can often kill the opponent out of nowhere. The Chromatic Orrery can make a ton of mana and potentially draw 5 cards if we control Joda. And then the Great Henge can often be cast for just double green, but still counts as a 9 mana card for cascade purposes, so it can potentially find some expensive cards and put them in play for free with Joda. And same goes with Galta, which costs X less to cast for access the total power of creatures we control, so often just double green for a 12-12 Trampler that will get additional power and toughness from Joda. And then our mana base has one of each snow-covered basic. We've got all the shock lands, as well as all the Innistrad duels that come into play untapped if we have two or more other lands in play, as well as all ten of the tri lands that enter the battlefield tapped but are necessary for mana fixing. The world tree, as we mentioned, with Golos, and then some five-color lands with Command Tower, Fabled Passage, Forsaken Crossroads, and Plaza of Heroes, which can also potentially protect one of our creatures, giving it Hexproof and Indestructible. So yeah, this deck is incredibly powerful if you get to curve out with Joda, but there's also a ton of ways to build it, and it was a real struggle to get it down to 100 cards. For the most part, I try to focus on ramp that's difficult for the opponent to interact with, so mostly not relying on creatures for ramp, and then I also try to include as many ways as possible to protect Joda once he's in play, so that's why we have all these legendaries giving hexproof and other various protective abilities, because once we get to untap with Joda, it's often game over after a turn or two. So that's our primary game plan, but again, as I've mentioned, very difficult to narrow it down to 100 cards, as there are so many powerful legendaries nowadays, and you might even see a few cards during the gameplay that weren't showcased here during the deck tech portion of the video, just as I was trying out as many legendaries as possible to see which ones work better. But for now, let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's a little bit too slow, needs a bit more ramp, I think. And this will keep up against a Liliana Dreadhorde General deck, so you can expect quite a bit of interaction 
for now can uh, play tower tapped giving us access to swords if needed and yeah we might want to exile a specialist early and maybe take the trade we'll give the opponent a treasure token which we may want to avoid ah that's fine And doesn't matter. Don't think so. Okay, we'll pass. And a lot of swords. Could have cast it in my turn to play around a sacrifice effect, potentially. Bonus got nothing. We've got a Relic of Legends. And then next turn maybe play Selvala. Baseless Haven at 3-3. Okay, let's play Selvala. And then I can still play Valky using the Relic's ability if I'd like. Or do we want to play around the Sweeper effect? I think I'm fine playing Valky here. Take a look. And killing Silvala. And our opponent's holding two more removal spells. At least the Grasp of Darkness cannot kill Joda. Opponent can play Liliana, make a zombie, and then Vile Offering can kill the Planeswalker. Right, never mind, Pun's gonna kill Valky. So now we actually cannot cast our legendary sorceries, but uh, Golos is a nice pickup. I think I prefer that over Joda, since Joda dies to feed the swarm. So I prefer to get more mana going, and we can grab our world tree. Opponents drew a power word kill. That's fine. So they still have an answer to. Joda in hand. So this will eventually fix her mana if we get one more land in play. Time for Liliana, which, as we mentioned, we cannot cast our legendary sorceries, but we can steal Liliana. Now the problem is Feed the Swarm also destroys enchantments. So kind of a tricky spot. Do we clutches Liliana? Or do we make them kill Joda and then uh, clutches Liliana next turn? Could also try and steal Liliana the turn before the ultimate, which would be pretty funny. Replicating ring. And feed the swarm kills Joda. Which I can also just replay here if I'd like, although then they can minus Liliana to kill it. Alright, Wrath, we can play at instant speed, that's useful. So yeah, I think we'll pass, and then plan is to steal Liliana and ultimate. And then now we're also safe to flash and Wrath to maybe block a zombie, although then our opponent gets to draw a card, which I might want to avoid. Opponent did not attack with Haven, so they might have something in hand here. But it's unlikely to answer our clutches. Yoink. A waste of my time. Death won't conquer me so easily. Oh my. I seem to have laid waste to your army. Oops. Opponents down to one land, and I think we can start racing. Yeah, that's pretty painful. Can even play everything at instant speed here. Let's see, Joe does 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Sure, why not? Attack for 3. Can use a Relic of Legends as well for mana. Well, 
Slash and Judah. Maybe should not have attacked, so I could have played Limvala at instant speed and immediately triggered Joda. But yeah, the writings on the wall can play a couple more legendaries, cascade into even more of them, and probably just kill the opponent on the spot. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand really needs a third land, pretty much. Ideally, a land coming into play untapped on turn two. But we've got a lot of ramp, so I'll try. Any third land plays a Faber Elder, which would be pretty good too. Alright, I'll take a Plaza of Heroes. And then we can explore. And we're off to the races. Opponent playing an old Stick Fingers deck, so typically. A deck planning to reanimate something powerful, turn 4, turn 5. We get to play Faber Elder as probably our safest bet. And the next turn maybe a Mirari's Wake. There's all Stick Fingers, X equals 1, putting in Cultivator Colossus, so that's going to be their reanimation target. And that's going to be hitting us very hard. Okay, so Elder can attack, and then we can Mirari's Wake and uh, take it from there, or we can just play a Joda right now, which may just be the preferred play. And then next turn we can potentially play Mirari's Wake with Faberu, and then still cast uh, some stuff afterwards with double the mana. So do they have a 4 mana reanimation spell? It's going to be a Blood for Bones. No. And our opponent's probably playing a lot of lands here for Cultivator Colossus to put in play. So this might take a second. Possible Colossus is their only reanimation target. Possible they have one or two additional ones. And we don't have an answer in hand. So we'll have to cascade into one. I doubt Tulsimir is going to be able to fight Colossus here. But Samuts could potentially help us set up a massive attack on the way back. So yeah, the plan's going to be tap Elder for 5 mana, play Wake, and then we have 8 mana to work with, so we can get Silvala and Samut in play, for instance, giving the team haste. And we'll take it from there. Opponents putting their entire deck into play, pretty much. Their value lands include Arch to draw, Gardens can make a token, Barons as a creature lands, Blast Zone to deal with one drops, Field of Ruin, Caves can draw. Right, just a 31-31. And we actually found Galta, one of our better hits. So, yeah, I think Mirari's Wake is still fine here. Although we technically could just skip Mirari's Wake altogether. Since if I play Mirari's Wake, I have 8 mana, whereas now I have 9 mana. But it also pumps the team by 1. Yeah, I still like the idea of getting Mirari's Wake in play. Then Samut, and then we can still Galta, finding Weather Lights. And a Kogla. Kogla can find the plant. Okay, there's Galta. So yeah, we should just have lethal here if we attack with everyone. So our opponent reanimated a 31-31 Trampling Cultivator Colossus on turn 4, putting a bunch of lands in play, even making a plant token, and this was our turn 5. Seems only fair. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and it's a 5 color Shrines up against a 5-color Legends. And our hand has some ramp with a Ringheart Crest, which we can play on turn 2. 
yeah, this seems keepable. Turn to Omen of the Sea, that's fine. Opponents ramping as well. Ooh, the Blade Reforged might be a little bit more exciting here than a Weatherlight. Can maybe find a land with it as well. Shadow Spear we can still cast. And then next turn Joda. And then if we can actually cast another Legendary with Joda and Blade Reforged in play, we can go off. Although our opponent can easily chum block with their Shrine Tokens now too. Removal is definitely a concern. Might just have to tap out for Joda and hope for the best. And then next turn maybe play Great Henge. Opponent falls to 16. Sanctum makes a token. We can eventually trample over the tokens with Shadow Spear. And the Destiny Spinner, okay, so no removal for Joda means we get to potentially combo off. Although never mind, Godless Shrine untapped is quite menacing here. Well, I'll start with a Great Henge, take it from there. Find your Sharn. And we get a counter for each card that gets exiled. So, could potentially accumulate a ton of counters here. Get our forests. And then we can play Kenrith, and then still give the team Trample and Haste. At least that's the plan. Find Akira for protection, just in case. Blade Reforged keeps growing, and I guess they're gonna tap it down with Sanctum, makes sense. Still get to draw. Still get to activate Kenrith. And that's why he's in the deck, just for this red ability. And attack with all. And that should do it. Awesome. Five color legends gets the best of five color shrines. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. It's Katilda versus Joda. And we've got our own Katilda, interestingly enough. My hands a little bit heavy on the five drops. Drew almost all of them. So as much as I like double land Katilda, we probably needed some cheaper stuff. So I'll take a mulligan, and this is better. A bit more balanced. As per Sentinels, pretty annoying. Do we want to play around it? Yeah, sure, I guess we can if we wanted to. Just wait an extra turn on Into the North. Although that potentially means not curving Wrath into Joda. Eh, let's just play Into the North. And then what color do I want to get? Let's go with red here. And no green mana, so it's going to be an aspirin to grow sentinel. And make us pay a bigger tax on non-creature spells. Partners isn't bad either. Don't hate the idea of a wrath to potentially set up an ambush. And then we should be able to cast Joda on 5. Could also see Katilda and then use creatures for mana instead of attacking. 
They might have concerns about Wandering Emperor, for instance. Alright. Don Hart's Mentor. Makes a 1-1. One, one. And our opponent's not gonna attack. Alright, let's flash in Wrath. Immortal Sun's not bad, but I think we're here for Joda. And I'll keep Wrath back on defense. Catilda. Still gives access to a ton of mana here. Or the Breta Guard Protector. Can also start making tokens. Is your opponent going very wide? And our non creature spells are going to require the Sentinel tax, which is probably not happening. So we can play partners and then take it from there. We can play Mortal Sun, pay the Sentinel tax. Might want to play Mortal Sun. And then just uh, let them draw with Sentinel. Can flash it in during the opponent's turn if I'd like. Keep my creatures back on defense. Since otherwise we risk taking a lot of damage. And hope they cannot remove Joda. And then ideally find a sweeper like Urza's Runa's Blast. There's Torrens, making more tokens. And Adlin, okay. Well, opponent's certainly going wide. So we need to do something powerful. What do we hit with Joda? Tulsimir? Okay. Catilda has protection from werewolves, but not regular wolves. So we could kill Catilda here, so they don't have as much mana, or I could kill Asper Sentinel. There's Adlin, but that would be a trade. And a Breta Guard Protector, I guess, pumps their team as well. So interesting choice. Yeah, let's kill the Protector here. Let them keep the mana. And get to untap with an Immortal Sun, hopefully. Looks like they might have a disenchant. Intervention, killing Immortal Sun, that's too bad. But an Akromas Memorial would be lovely to get down. For now, probably go for partners. See what we get. A Mox Amber. Can cast Minsk. We'll let them draw. And hit a Shadow Spear, which will be useful too. Okay, so Partner's Triggers giving 9 additional power and haste. Could target Minsk and turn the team sideways, or we can target Raph, hoping there's no removal here. Or even the Trampler to diversify. Sure. Attack with all. And our opponent explodes, yeah, despite them having a great start, we still got there. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Got our green mana. Won't be able to play our uh, two drop here on turn two, but probably just means we'll save this for the creature half. Opponent playing a party deck. So don't expect too much interaction, but they can apply a lot of pressure quickly. So we need to make sure we can uh, curve out smoothly. Opponent already with Warrior and Wizard. Let's cultivate here. And then I need red mana for sure. 
and have lots of blue. Could maybe use more green. Okay. So next turn we can maybe double spell or just cast Joda right away. Spellbinder gonna have a look. Might take Kethis, which is a card that enables the most explosive uh, play patterns here. So I might be forced to play Joda and hope it survives. All right, opponent took the Questing Beast instead. Mortal Sun's nice too. So I think I'm just better off playing Joda and hoping it sticks around. And then next turn we can maybe double spell Kethis and Karizev. Alright, opponents got a full party. And we'll take it. So this turn better be good. Yeah, Kethis plus uh, Karizev seems like the play. We found Katilda, which can also make mana here, including with Joda. So now I could play Arata Drabek if I'd like. So we can maybe line up some blocks and get our creatures back in token form. And Mox Amber lets us play Karizav. Which will find Shadow Spear. And our opponent explodes. Okay, what a turn. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And is missing blue mana to cast Growth Spiral. So do we keep up against a Jani Sleeper Agent? Yeah, let's take a free mulligan. This is better. Explore, hopefully play Mirari's Wake at some point. And that'll ramp us into our bigger plays. Although hopefully initiates a problem if it can destroy our enchantments. Okay, for now we're off to a fine start. Missing a play on turn 4. But our opponent's also not applying too much pressure. So we could see... A completed Ajani on turn 3. It's gonna be a Luminarch instead. So yeah, next turn they could decide to just spend their entire turn blowing up our uh, Mirari's Wake with Hopeful Initiate. So is that still the play? It's not guaranteed our opponent even sees the line or goes for it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna still try it. Alternative would be playing Joda. But if they remove it, that would be kind of sad, whereas now I can maybe double spell next turn. And it's going to be tempting for them to play a Johnny. But no, they might actually activate Initiate here instead. Alright, that's too bad. Never mind, opponents taps out for a Bloom Hulk to proliferate. Alright, so now we get to untap a turn with Mirari's Wake, which is probably all we need. Okay, step one. Make a lot of mana. And um, step two. Cast as many spells as possible. So this is making red, black, green, white, blue. And now we've got some white to spare. Play Joda. And Akroma's Memorial seems fine here. Finding Kolvori. And smash. Bones at 12. And uh, next turn we can maybe steal something. Elspeth Resplendence. That's fine. Every job is an opportunity to learn more about this city. May your peace last. 
finds a land and our opponent explodes. Yeah, they're just dead in the air before we even cast anything else. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw and we're playing the mirror match. So we want to try and look for a slightly more explosive draw. This one could be good with Isika, although we don't have double green, so I don't think I can keep. This is better. Got a bit of ramp with Cold Steel Hearts, and then two great payoffs for getting Joda in play. So Cold Steel Hearts names White. Opponent playing Chronicler, so possible they're playing some legendary shrines. And then I think Blade Reforged before Krenko, although kind of a close call. So next turn, if we play Joda, we'll have only two legendary creatures. So this would get plus two, plus two. Could still maybe attack past Isika, but opponent could just play a Joda next turn. So I think Blade Reforged makes more sense. And then we can attack as well, get a counter on it. Should not have played my land yet before attacking, but that's okay, got plenty of lands. Alright, it's gonna be a Kethys, so maybe missing a land drop for the turn. And a Thalia, we don't care about too much. Okay, it's Joda time. Blade can attack. And next turn we get to completely go off. Opponent has her own Joda. Kathis hits us for seven. Okay. So step one, probably Great Henge, so we draw off Krenko. And Clutches stealing the opponent's Joda seems good, which essentially just kills it, but that seems good enough for me. And our opponent concedes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. Got Catilda alongside another human here to make some mana. Facing a Gretchen deck, blue-green. Turn to Mindstone. And we get to play Catilda. And next turn already play Partners. Familiar. So don't expect any counter spells here. And then next turn we could already play Joda. Zendikar's Royal to make elemental tokens. And yeah, I think it's Joda time. And uh, can even give it haste with partners. And then play a tap land afterwards. Although, hmm. Can actually, by giving it haste, I could play Fibblethip afterwards, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, let's try that instead, because Joda can make the blue. Also attacking for 19 is also tempting. I think I still want to get my value here. And either get a Shadow Spear or a Mox Amber. And then next turn we can potentially attack with a team. Zenikar's Royal triggers and just a Gretchen the play. Captain Cisse is also excellent. I'm thinking we just play Tulsimir, even if they counter it, it's fine.
but the legendary wolf token fighting can take out any of the opponent's creatures. And we still get the Joda trigger here despite the counterspell. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the first sliver. And our hands got potential. Cultivate into Mirari's Wake. Sign me up. And can even play a Shadow Spear turn one, or I can play it turn two. Doesn't matter too much. So we can save ourselves a bit of life. And then we'll have to wait and see what type of first sliver deck our opponent's playing, if it's sliver tribal or maybe some other Tybalt's trickery deck. Cold Steel Hearts can be my play now. Naming blue. And then we can cultivate plus Shadow Spear, setting up for maybe a Mirari's Wake before playing Joda, so we can maybe cast Joda and a Legendary in the same turn to get immediate value. Does look like a dedicated Slivers deck, and Clout Shredder on turn 2 is one of the scarier ones to face. Okay, let's still cultivate. Opponent's got their own Cold Steel Heart, that's fine. Okay, time for Mirari's Wake, I think. Tap this first. Although I guess we won't be able to Lantern afterwards, that's fine, we'll just play tapped Steam Vents. And then next turn it should be party time with Joda. Herald's Horns, acceptable. Okay. Step one, play Joda. Can play a Lantern and make sure we actually have some green mana left to cast Henge. Finding Timeless Lotus, so a lot of mana. Just waiting for some payoffs now. Okay. First sliver cascades into an explorer. And they can fly over. We'll gain some life here in the turn. Ooh, partners is nice. Can give whatever we cascade into haste. And moon druids, good reason to keep a land in hand. Ooh, and a temporal sundering. Alright, that's probably game over here. And a sandwich too. Why not? We'll give the team haste. Cast Colvori. This is already lethal, but we could even take an extra turn if we wanted to. Awesome. Alright, so we got to see our five color Legends deck in action, and once it goes off and you get to untap with Joda, it goes off really hard. So yeah, that's gonna be it for me today. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.